Um, Singh, Armin, could you speak a bit about what's going on with the massive water protests going on in Iran and now the recent reported protest camp in, uh, in flames? Yeah, so in Iran, people are out in the streets um, in, in uh, huge numbers. Thank you for asking that music guy. Um, and they are, th there's a water shortage. And it's not just because global warming. A lot of studies that sh shows that yes, global warming has a, had the major uh, effect um, in the water shortage in Iran, uh, but it's also also a lot of it, or even mostly, according to some reports, because of mismanagement by the government. Okay, so it's both of them. Okay, how much? A lot of people are saying the mismanagement is more, but. I don't really know. It's, it's two major factors, mismanagement by the government and water shortage. One, one easy way to know that this is mismanagement by the government is that even during, like before, like during the previous, uh, during the Shah's time, you had droughts when during dry seasons and you had no droughts during um, wet seasons. Wet seasons, is that how you say it? But now you have droughts even when it's, raining even when it's like not dry season like the water management has been devastating like every single analyst can tell you that there's a they, they call there's a thing in iran called the water mafia and people are just the amount of corruption when it comes to managing the water water in iran has been is so apparent and it's been such a devastating blow to the agriculture, uh, uh, to the economy in Iran, right? Um, and people are desperate. People are like angry coming out. And the clever thing about these new uh, demonstrations in Iran has been that uh, people are trying not to give any excuse to the government to come and attack them, right? So the government always says that, oh, people can protest about mismanagement, economic issues, as long as it doesn't get um, political, anti khomeini or like revolutionary. People can, they're like, oh, yeah, we were, we're for pro free speech, um, as long as it's not like anti, like trying to take down the government. Like people could come and say, so people now, like, let's test that. And they have been very careful not to use chance that is directed at um Khamenei or toppling the regime they're just complaining about the water and mismanagement and the government is like oh crap these people like they the government wants them to say things that makes them like gives them an excuse to come and attack the crowd right um because otherwise they're going to look it's going to be really bad if they go out, if just people are as, asking for better management and they go attack them. Like so, But the interesting thing is that you could say that the crowd, even though there's no like anti-harmony chants or pro-toppling the government chant, uh, they're very much, and they're just cold, controlling themselves and showing a lot of restraint because... Like in a couple of instances, you saw like somebody says like, I want to thank Khamenei and the entire crowd like got angry and like booed and shut him, shut him or her down like a couple of times in different cities. Uh, somebody was like saying like, by the way, like, thank you Khamenei. Or, like the entire crowd like, at you know, booed the speaker, right? So you can see the entire crowd is like anti-Khamenei, anti-regime, but they're just like restraining themselves just so that there's no excuse for shutting down the protests, right? So another thing that the government is try trying um, is to um, t turn them against each other, right? So one thing the government was, because water is being moved from one province to another province, and what the government was trying to do on, on media was to show like, oh, look, these province is angry with this province because they saying like, you don't deserve the water. Why are you taking our water away? Like from here to here. So instead of like all of these demonstrators being united against the regime, they wanted to be like, oh, we're against uh, the people in Esfahan being against the people, the Kurdish people. Um, and then this would be an internal fight. But then that didn't work because as soon as they people saw that this attempt was being made, chants something and ch people started chanting to support other cities like people in as like people like i don't know esfahanis and kurds unite and bakhtiaris and kurds unite like people in one province were showing that no you, just because like you're moving our water to that promise you're not going to turn us against them we're all united with each other against your mismanagement and the corruption right so instead of chanting against like the 
um, Islamic Republic of Iran, people are saying like death to the water mafia and stuff like that. So it's harder for excuses to, to attack these um, demonstrations. So it's very clever. It's amazing because there's no leadership and it seems very organized. Like it seems like people just get cues from each other and what they're supposed to do without having any central command system or any leadership that is managing all of this. It's amazing. Um, so another, uh, uh, I hope it continues like this. So there, there are more recent things that's happening is that the government doesn't really want to have like, sh because remember in two years ago when they attacked demonstrators and they had like, so they killed so many people, they shot people, right? They started shooting at people two years ago when there was demonstrations and at least, at least 1500, like the estimates of the people who died two years ago when the government started attacking the demonstrations is um, minimum according to Reuters, 1500 and according to uh, count uh, the bump in the death rates reported to the hospitals that in that in the, uh, right after the demonstrations um up to 6000 right so between 1500 to 6000 people were shot dead by the government 2 years ago and that's have been the price that the government has been paying the, the amount of unity that people now have against the government um has made the government less you know less willing to be that violent okay not because they're good now but it's just because they don't want to give political capital they, they're making they notice that they keep making martyrs and these martyrs become forces against them right um so they're trying new tactics um this the, the, so it's interesting they the the people like they put the protest camps on flames. It was like in the night, like it was trying to people with not wearing any official clothing by the government just so that there could be plausible deniability. Um, some people are like, some of them are pretending that they're not from like the main government, but maybe from the city government. Like they're, they're using some really clever, not so clever, but like sneaky tactics as a way to like try to attack these people to believe, but also not hold the government responsible for it. Um, to go in the middle of the night and like set these camps on f uh, flames. But overall, ever since now, since that has came out, it's now motivating more people to continue with these demonstrations. I don't know what the government is doing. I think the government um, is either going to be like, should we clamp down on this and attack everybody, but then potentially make turn it into a bigger thing because we're attacking everybody, or like not touch it and just hope that these people get tired and go away. But if we don't touch it, are people gonna get motivated and the protest gets bigger and bigger until we can't control it anymore? So they don't know what to do. They're afraid that if they don't touch it, it will get, the protest will get so big and out of control, but they think like, well, if we touch it and we attack people, that also could lead to protests getting bigger and out of control. So they're like, they don't know, like they're trying to figure out what, the, they try to turn them against each other, that didn't work. Um, there, there's another, like, I can't get into more and more details. There's a lot of other sneaky tactics that they're using. Um, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, <laughs> music guy saying, you see people, I can't get this info from the news. That's why I love army. Uh, thank you, music guy. Thank you. Thank you. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.